Our first topic today is the ongoing situation in Ukraine. After Russia invaded Crimea, claiming to protect its population from what is called the Ukrainian a referendum will be held to determine the fate of the Crimean Peninsula. Meanwhile, President Obama is talking tough, but little action has followed. Dr. Ben Vecti, is this a sign of American weakness, or is it prudent for the President to keep a safe distance from the situation? Well, um, thank you for having me today, um, Megan. It's, um, I wouldn't put it in terms of weakness. I think, you know, Russia's influence uh, in our hemisphere is limited, just as our influence uh, in their region is limited. It's always been that way. Um, uh, I think our focus, I think we should be take a firm stand. Um, our, our focus, we are not going to be able to prevent the referendum. So our focus should be on preventing um, Russia from annexing the Crimea if the referendum is uh, approved by the population. Uh, but it is against international law. We need to take a firm stand on that. Um, and we need to play a long game. We can't stop Russia from doing what they're doing right now because we're not going to intervene militarily. But we can create, impose sanctions on Russia which can hurt them. Uh, and the best way to do that is to work through the EU. The Germans uh, are a partner that Russia respects. Uh, Putin has a great deal of respect for Angela Merkel, the Russian Chancellor. Um, she is determined now, she's exhausted all diplomatic options with him, and she's determined to uh, impose economic sanctions on his inner circle and on, on the country as well as a whole if, if annexation does take place. And that will be effective because Russia is very dependent on the European economy. Uh, a lot of wealthy uh, Russians have uh, homes and investments in Europe, continental Europe. They're very vulnerable there. Uh, and uh, Russia's natural gas is exported largely to uh, Western Europe. And Germany is already starting to think about moving back towards coal and away from natural gas. They've already gave up their nuclear uh, uh, Electronic, uh, electric power production several years ago. But they're starting to think about going back towards coal to uh, limit their dependency on Russian natural gas, which would really hurt Russia. So I think if we support the Europeans and the Germans, uh, that will be effective. And furthermore, I think we need to focus on the future, um, because there are many other countries in Russia's borders that could be subject to this kind of Russian expansionism, uh, and we need to protect them. So I, going forward, we need to build up a, a system that makes it clear to Russia that if they do this again, that there will be strong sanctions against them. And what kind of other uh, sanctions do you propose? Mostly economic sanctions. I mean, today the uh, Russian economy is much more dependent on the global economy than it was 10, 20 years ago. And I think those sanctions can keep them from taking further such measures. Do you have anything else on it? Uh, well, I, I don't think we'll be seeing any sanctions uh, anytime soon. Uh, I think Obama um, and, and the EU was kind of on a, on a fast track to that. But it, it was stopped dead in its tracks by uh, Putin basically pushing a measure through his own legislature that would have seized uh, foreign assets, U.S. And, and EU assets in, uh, in Russia. And so re that really kind of dragged Western corporations and elites into this in a way that hadn't happened before. And so I think that honestly that has ended all potential for economic sanctions that are going to happen. I would be very surprised because Russia is going to respond at least in measure to whatever we do. And the EU is going to put pressure on the U.S. actually not to do that because of the, the reliance that they have on Russian state oil that passes through Ukraine. So they, they wouldn't want to do something like that. But I'd also like to mention that, first of all, it's a conflict between the EU and Russia. I don't think that we have the level of kind of geopolitical, uh, that there is a level of significance that we're placing on this. Uh, I also think that we should contextualize Russia's actions. Uh, in 1990, um, Mikhail Gorbachev made an agreement with Bush Sr. that he would allow the dissolution of the Soviet Union if the United States wouldn't expand NATO uh, into Eastern Europe. Uh, Clinton, Bush Jr., and Obama have all violated that agreement. Uh, putting NATO missiles in, in say, Ukraine right, at, right up against Russia's border is kind of like putting missiles in Cuba for us. So I think we should understand that from their perspective when we're dealing with this kind of Russian aggression. You know, I, it, it's interesting. I think we can we can now put the global warming problem on uh, Putin's head also with the Germans going back to coal. It's kind of a, an interesting <laughs> point that we can make there. I, I think what we should do is, I, I, I agree, I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, big uh, economic sanctions put on it, but I think there's other things we can do. The G7 brought in Russia um, as a reward for a, an evolving economic change in that country. Uh, I think they should throw them out and boot Putin out from being the head of the G8, uh, take it back down to G7. That's something that, that uh, President Putin has really striven for, is to get Western approval. And I think bumping him out uh, as a 
a sanction for his actions would, would, is something that's really going to take place and would really hit home uh, with him. Uh, you know, I think there's one thing that this has shown is that you can trust Russia to do only one thing, what's best for Russia and what's best for President Putin. They, the uh, ongoing problems in Syria, they're, they're now started up talks with Iran on put, building new uh, nuclear power plants in the country. Those are all things that benefit Russia, benefit them geopolitically, benefit them financially. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would disagree that there, we do have a political stand uh, in the Ukraine. We just can't allow this type of thing to go on in Russia and Putin himself to believe his own propaganda that he's a tough guy and everything else. I think we should also uh, move, you know, quickly to readopt the plan of putting our nuclear missile shield into Poland and the Czech Republic. Maybe not the Ukraine, because like you said, I think that's a little bit too uh, provocative. But I think back into Poland and, and bringing that as an issue that's back on the table as a result of his actions is something that would strike home.